All the people that have seen these pieces, you know, maybe two or three people picked up on it right away. They knew exactly, wow, this is just a collect, you know, a multitude of, of uh, uh, cultures incorporated into one. You know, there's no intent in trying to make them any one thing. There's no intent, I'm going to try to make this have a, uh, an Egyptian influence, or this is going to have an Inca influence, or American Indian influence, or anything. It, it's it's just what happens to come out from, you know, whatever my thoughts are. It's kind of like you surprise yourself when you get the 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 end results. And like I say, it's like, oh God, how could I really have done that? You know, if you thought about it in advance. The next piece has always been the best piece. And then to do another, the next one, and then that's, oh God, can I top that one? And it seems like as you go through the pieces, each one is more refined, is probably more exciting than the one before. A lot of it's just, you know, exploration. I mean, I have a a retail hardwood business and there's times that there's nothing to do so I need something to be working on. I get a little uh, antsy and want to you know, bail out but because I have a retail thing and open to the public I need to be here so part of the, of the motivation has been to, 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 to deal with that lax time and with building something. I mean, I got the tools, I got the wood here, uh, a certain skill level that allows me to uh, construct this stuff. And, and so I'll just have a piece around and, and work on it. I just want to get a little bit of shape in here. For now, just to, And then come back and, you know, tune it up. Everything gets tuned. <laughs> It's never been important to label myself as, you know, a woodworker or a, an artist or a designer. I realized one time uh, that I could build anything I designed, so that's just kind of opened up the, uh, the field of uh, possibilities and, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's captivating. Right now I'm in these uh, sculpture pieces, which are, uh, lends itself to apply some of the uh, different mediums I've messed around in, from jewelry making to ceramics to drawing, and it really, you know, gives me a, a range of, of options to enhance uh, a piece with, you know, particular detail. I've always, uh, like I said, realized that I could build anything I design, so there's no limitation to you know, what I might get myself involved in. Uh, I like 
I like the process and I like uh, seeing the results at the end. Yeah, I think I'm done with probably enough I want to do today. <clears throat> I think so. When I first started uh, building furniture in the early 80s, at the same time I bought a small hardwood business from a, a local couple that were retiring. Started selling wood and uh, building a little bit of commissioned furniture for different people. I think we, uh, most of us uh, woodworkers and uh, artists and, and uh, other small business people moved into this area because it was the industrial area and you know rents were cheap and uh, had uh, big spaces and and so there was a, a lot of uh, creative people within two or three four blocks of, of my shop. Uh, I can see that uh, it's coming to an end. I'm going to have to move all the pieces out of here and find another shop somewhere that uh, fits my needs. It obviously won't be anywhere close to what this has uh, done for my uh, woodworking and creativity. Hey, morning, Tom. How's it going? Hi, nice, sis. Haven't seen you all time. Uh, I'm, hey, I'm looking for some uh, Honduras mahogany. Uh, I what can't... dimensions do you want? Well, I'm using the uh, the eight quarter, eight quarter eight quarter material. Well, it's got some eight quarter in. It's really quite good. And, uh, a little bigger piece you need. Uh, yeah, this is the this is the this is the genuine. Yeah. Not the African, right? Yeah. That's what I yeah. mean, That's what I use. And, uh, that might work for what you want to get out of it. Uh, it's a little more. It's probably perfect, actually. It might, once might I, work out once I start cutting it out. Okay. So let me figure it up, and we'll see what what it's going to cost you. How are things going down here? Oh, uh, you know, it's going pretty slow right now, but somebody just bought the building about two weeks ago and paid five and a half million bucks for it. Uh, raised my rent 60%. 60%, yeah. 60, not 5%. And said that they would be uh, open to a lease and, and uh, possibly negotiate on the rent increase. Wow. And after uh, uh, I submitted a, a proposal to them. They came back and said they would negotiate on the rent and also only offer a month to month lease. So <laughs> a month to month lease. So that's uh, my situation right now. And so my plan is, is to have to move out by the end of the year. I'm looking around for another space. It's, it's sad, I've lived through it. I feel sorry for you. I hate to see you go. Yeah. Quite a legacy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so the retail will end and your art will continue somewhere else? Well, that's my plan. Uh, I, I just don't think I can find a space large enough to continue the wood business, so I may wind up with just a, a little one-person shop to work on my own artwork. And, yeah. Uh, so yeah. we'll see how that works out, but uh, right now uh, it looks a little grim. So we're here up in my uh, studio above my workspace where I do a lot of my sketching and get some of my inspiration for some of the pieces I build. These pieces that I've made, uh, I, I look at it as it's a, a product of your experiences and it was uh, let's make one and explore the, the experience of carving in wood, making a, a a figure which the first one resembles a little bit of a kachita doll, which reflects my travels to Arizona and New Mexico. The next two had less similarities. You could still see that influence from those travels to Arizona and New Mexico. 
And it really wasn't until the fourth one I really uh, broke out away from that. I just had this uh, uh, inspiration to evolve to something new and next piece had a, a mask in front of its face. And uh, that really intrigued me. I've seen uh, a series of masks at a museum of all the uh, North American Indians that carved a lot of masks. So I always got intrigued by masks. I like using multiple uh, materials. Uh, I did a little ceramics and jewelry at the University of Oregon and so I like using those experiences in embellishing the piece. Uh, I might cast something, uh, I might decide on a particular uh, use of gold leaf or silver leaf or dyes and my whole approach is there's, there's no mystery to it. It's, it's just I wasn't trying to generate mystery or intrigue. Uh, uh, I think people will just appreciate them for their beauty, their uniqueness, and they'll come to some sort of conclusion in their own mind what what they are. I mean, I get that experience from when people come into my showroom and look at them. You know, most everybody li loves them, and and so, like I have said before, some people immediately understand that they are a collection of, of old cultures uh, combined into one. I think that I feel some connection to these indigenous cultures uh, because I uh, appreciate you know the, the level of uh, art that they created and the admiration I have for what they did with you know no schooling no tools to speak of uh, all the other things they had to do to survive and then they produced this amazing artwork I don't improvise once I do a drawing. I mean, I figure out most all the detail as I'm drawing it up. And you can go back and look at all my drawings for each piece and they'll be, you know, 98% exactly like the drawing. I mean, I, I don't see any need to improvise as you go. I mean, I know other artists that do that, but to me, it, it doesn't really work very well. I really like having it figured out and then let's go through the, the process and finish it. So um, today's just the, the first adventure into the head, which is I saved for the last because it's gonna be the most difficult for me to do. I'm really uh, making these things for myself and I think that's what makes it really easy because I don't have to take in anybody else's consideration. It uh, makes it a, a real interesting, no stress process to go through. I may have a little bit of hair on this side of the shoulder going down, I'm not sure yet, so I'm going to leave this up high all the way around. I drew a line here, so this is kind of the center of the of the body, right, it, based in the center of the shoulders, and uh, so then it can work down to that. I think you want to wait till it's all roughed out, and then take a look at it, and then keep working it down to the scale that fits the piece and uh, so that's what I'm attempting to do here. Well the last piece that I did, the shaman, from start to finish took about a year with all the detail, the gold leaf and uh, stain and inlay stuff uh, and I was able to work on it a little bit almost every day and uh, so I would guess 
this might actually go a little faster. Uh, uh, you know, I would say six months or eight because sometimes there's some downtime uh, uh, when it sits. I gotta once I get this carved, I'll take it and have someone that builds gold leaf picture frames, and they'll spray the whole thing with gesso. And so some of that timing may take extra time, and then then that has to be all sanded, and uh, then you're ready to put any kind of gold or copper leaf on. This is gonna have copper leaf on it. So let's go back here and carve a little more and see if we can shape this head a little bit. So. This mummy goddess uh, really represents a, a shift in the progression of each of these pieces. Major uh, inspiration was a, a show at the Bowers Museum uh, in Santa Ana. They had a collection of mummies from the British Museum in London. Several of the mummies had placards where the face would be and they would have an image of the person that was mummified painted onto that. But I thought I would uh, explore the, uh, the option of actually having the face exposed and kind of my first experience at actually carving in somewhat anatomically correct face. This piece has silver leaf on the arms where they are carved and gold leaf on the face and a lot of uh, stains and alcohol-based aniline dye and mix it with shellac, brush the, the shellac over the gold and because it's translucent you get this very unusual, unique look. And, and I think that part of doing these is, is, is some of the exploration of, of you know, new ideas, new materials, new influences. I was standing out in front of my shop one day and uh, had this hit that, geez, I ought to make a cigar store Indian, I guess thinking of something out in front of my place. So I immediately went up and discovered a big variety of uh, cigar store Indians, including female cigar store Indians, which I had no clue that there ever was any. You know, I have that kind of stereotypical image of a cigar store Indian with a, a warrior with a war bonnet. And, and uh, uh, so that kind of perked my interest up. And then I started learning about uh, the origin of the cigar store Indian, where the the Iroquois turned the English on to tobacco, and the English went back and opened up their own tobacco stores, and they uh, engaged uh, shipwrights that carved figureheads on boats, and they started carving them, and they didn't know what Indians looked like, so they made them look like uh, slaves. And this was in the 1600s, late 1600s, I think. Well, it wasn't uh, any grand plan at all. It was just an evolution from doing some uh, totem figures, then just got some idea of, well, what are you gonna do next? Well, gee, maybe I ought to make a figured one. 
and so it's been you know 10, 12 years of uh, an evolution from one piece to the next, but this is uh, taking it farther than the initial eight or 10 of them that were all two dimensional, and this being three dimensional, which is way more of a stretch for me, and uh, getting a sense of how to work through that uncharted territory for me, so. I've now just completed the sanding of the gesso, which is the underlayment for gilding. And on this particular piece, I'm gonna use uh, copper leaf on all the skin. And so the gesso uh, is a product of calcium carbonate that goes back several thousand years that it's always been the underlayment for gilding because you can sand it to a almost a glass-like surface. It's really now prepped and ready to begin the, the copper leafing on this. And there's also gonna be a little bit of gold leaf on the uh, bracelets here and uh, on the moccasin.
all done. Finishing up this leafing here in the next day or two, uh, that's the next step. And then the more you rub it, the more you begin to take away some of the gold, which reveals the color of the clay underneath, which gives it the look that it's been rubbed and wiped down over the years and, and it's just worn off. So if you get the light right, you start to see some of where I've rubbed a little of the copper off and you can see the blue uh, clay showing through and it just gives that worn aged look to it. And, uh, and once this copper changes its tone from uh, now until it gets the oxidation on it, that gives it that copper penny color, uh, then the blue will really show up. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna work at the typical pace that I've been working at. So I got three months and we'll see how it goes. It should be able to, uh, I just don't think about it and just work at my pace. I should be able to complete at least 95% of it. So uh, I want to talk about this uh, next piece, which is uh, uh, a parrot, which is a very important piece. It's a god of the clan or culture that I've created. It has two heads that represent both genders, and it also has uh, bare feet, which uh, represents the common people. Some of the origin of, of this piece, I had this idea about uh, the Incas or the Mayans or the Aztecs uh, capturing a macaw. You know, maybe it had a broken wing or uh, ill or something and they put it in a pen and, and after three or four months the parrot started talking to them. It had to, you know, really just blow them out and make them think that this was the gods would come to talk to them. And uh, so that was my inspiration to uh, think of the parrot being the god of this clan. I just thought it had to be. So uh, I carved this piece and, and I, I really I just love it. So uh, that's where that inspiration came from. Some of the material I used on this piece is uh, 24 karat gold on the head, uh, some 24 karat gold on the wings, uh, copper above the, the wings, uh, some copper on the skirt, abalone shell with uh, orange coral for the eyes, and a little bit of turquoise uh, and abalone shell on the necklace here. These leggings, which look like they might be feathered. There's no really preconceived notion about what, it, what, what, what I'm trying to represent. Uh, you know, I'm trying to uh, create something that's, that, you know, fits my aesthetic and is pleasing to my eye. I mean, that's, it's pretty basic. And I've done that in furniture that I build. It, it's pretty much just trying to, to put some uniqueness in it trying to have something that's pleasant, because I'm really making them for myself. So I'm not, I don't have anybody else's input or considerations uh, in, in having to design the piece. You know, unfolds and you problem solve and, and uh, you get this uh, results. And you know, when it's done, I like them. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah.
I think it's kind of natural that uh, through the eight or ten pieces I've done and you get to the cigar store lady, they, they keep getting more and more refined. I mean, 20 years ago I couldn't have done any of them. It may not be as, as, as perfect as someone else could do, but it, it, I always make stuff to, to satisfy my own eye and, and something I could live with. Uh, you know, you kind of get one chance at this one and it'll, I think it'll be just fine. Uh, uh, however she turns out, I think she'll be fine. So. Following the interest I had in, in uh, indigenous cultures, uh, kind of led me down this path. But I kind of had this thought that uh, indigenous people and, and the fact that they didn't go to art school, you know, maybe art school uh, gives you some idea of an expectation of what an artist has to be. You know, if you sell a lot of stuff, you must be successful and good, and if you don't sell anything, you must be a failure. And I think maybe I was lucky not to, to uh, be exposed to that. And the fact that I didn't go to art school, you know, I don't have those expectations. People are driven and the value they place on things are different and, and their motivations are different and, and uh, you know, you know, it's the process that you want to enjoy and be happy with and, and I don't think being creative is any different than that. And so it was just never important to, to strive to be, you know, a famous artist or a famous woodworker or, or anything. I mean, it's just tools that you use to, to uh, enjoy life. indigenous old cultures all had a shaman. They were the intermediaries between the, the mortals and the gods and they had special powers and they could cure people. I thought, well, that would be an appropriate piece to make. I always apply the gold leaf first and this particular piece has uh, 24 karat gold on its sleeves and its uh, headboard and then 18 karat gold on the face and the arms and the feet. I use some authentic mummy beads that come from Egypt that I could use as necklaces, which I really like. Uh, gives some authenticity to it. That, I think, is a details that uh, I like to do. In some of my travels to the Southwest, Arizona and New Mexico, I discovered some silversmith stamps that the Navajos used and they make them out of automotive valve stems which are hardened steel and they'll grind in an image in the end of it and then they can pound silver with it. Well, and so I've used them in some of the different pieces and, and on this particular piece I've, I've used them in here where you can stamp the gold and it doesn't break the gold, it just gives us a nice impression. I used them up in here also stamp some of the 
the silver on the, the bottom of his wand with the same stamps. Uh, also use some uh, Indian wampum that uh, are actually shell, something that uh, Explore Scout Leader, who was a Cherokee, gave me. So I thought it was an appropriate thing to use it on this particular piece. And then I thought he ought to have a, a parrot on his arm because the parrot is the god of the clan that I've created here. And as I was going through the, the finishing process, my idea was to use uh, silver leaf on the parrot and then rub through the the leaf to expose the clay. As I was approaching that, I thought, gosh, the, this black parrot is so great for this piece. I just polished the, the clay and left it as it is, and it just fits the piece perfectly. Well, we've been here at uh, Saboba for you know, 35 years, and uh, we always knew it was going to come to an end at some point. So we're kind of at the last week and sold off most of the hardwoods that we retailed out of here. And so now I'm looking for another shop, and, and as soon as I uh, locate that space, I'm going to move into that. And, and keep it as a just a studio to work on furniture pieces and and more sculpture so miss cigar store lady here is going to be the first thing i uh, uh, attack when i get into my new studio and and we'll continue the process that we got going here with all the, the confusion and chaos of finding a place to live looking for a shop moving everything out i just haven't had time to work on it which is really a disappointment. She looks just good now. Well, God, what's she gonna look like when it's done? I need to be completely focused on it to, to figure out the, the detail on it. Uh, it's really a disappointment because you kind of get into uh, a rhythm of uh, of the steps that's in the process and, and I haven't figured out what the, the colors are gonna be on the next step, so it's really the fun part. One kind of sets the stage for the next color to unfold and then there's lots of uh, detail that's gonna be uh, applied to uh, the belt or the bottom of the skirt here or the kind of the collar of the the blouse and it's exciting to think about what, how it might turn out but you know I really don't allow myself to think about figuring out those those portions of it until uh, I get to that. So, uh, I think she's coming along quite well and uh, it'll be interesting to uh, wrap it up and see what she looks like at the, at the end. Thank you.